Hey everybody, I'm Oakley at Oakley Does Everything, and today we're going to be doing our suit up special for our John Arc cosplay. And I'll be letting you know how you can win this sword. Stay tuned. So what do I mean we're doing a suit up special? Well, I'm going to take each piece of armor, hoodie, all my props that go with this cosplay, and we're going to be putting them on piece by piece and talking about them and just kind of some of the things I like about them, things I don't like about them, and just give you guys an in-depth idea of what it took to make all these pieces. The first thing we're going to put on and the first thing I actually started working on was the hoodie for the cosplay. And of course, we've got Pumpkin Pete to deal with. Like my hoodie? I've always had this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and switch into my hoodie right now. I was all pretty yesterday. Man, I wish you were pretty today too. <laughs> so here I am in the Pumpkin Pete hoodie, and I am incredibly pleased with how it turned out. This is the first time I did an embroidering kind of thing. You can see the stitching I ended up doing all the way around the main face of the bunny head. <laughs> I also ended up doing felt for the eyes and doing a little bit embroidery around the outside to just kind of keep it in place. And then the smile, I was really, really excited about because as you can see, that is nothing but embroidery all the way around. I had to do a little bit of experimenting with that to get it right and I'm very, very happy with how it came out. Moving on to the stitching, the stitching I ended up doing like an extra added thing to it because as you can see, there's, you can see the orange stitching from the outside. Same thing from on, on top like this. And I did that just because I wanted there to be a little bit more accent to the hoodie itself and not just kind of plain black stitching and hiding all of the stitches. It's kind of hard to see from a distance, but it's just something that makes me feel a little bit better and a little bit more proud of what I did. And now with the hoodie, that was, this is the first time I've ever made a hood for any kind of clothing, whether it's a coat, a sweater, anything like that. Actually, it took me two tries. Uh, I wasn't happy with the first one. The first one was a little bit too small. Uh, the pieces right here didn't quite close all the way, so I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. For Jean Arc's character, his, the inside of his hoodie is orange and the outside is black, so I did a two-layered hoodie for that. So obviously the black is on the outside with the orange stitching. And then on the inside, I did it with black stitching. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is. And this one, I made it extra large so that it can take in a lot of my head. But yeah, so this is a hoodie, as you can see, pretty straightforward. I made the pattern out of a fitted button-up shirt that I have. Uh, I took it apart uh, and used it for these patterns, and that's why it's nice and slim on me on the sides. I'm a small person, and so I wanted it to be a slimmer hoodie as opposed to a bigger hoodie. And just like the character, he has armor on top of it, and so that keeps it all together real nice. All right, and now we're going to move on to the next piece, which are the boots. And this took me a ton of time to work on. For the end product, I am incredibly happy with how it turned out. These are very accurate to what Jean Arc wears in the show. I think I spent about five hours on each boot just doing hand stitching. It was worth it. So we're going to go ahead and put these on and show you what they look like. With these, they're actually really easy to get on, and if you pay close enough attention, you'll notice from Jean Arc's first three seasons, volume one through three, he actually wears black pair of Converse, and when he upgrades into volume four to his boots, they also look like Converse. I wanted to make sure to get a similar feel for that. I feel like I got pretty close, and I don't think that you could buy a pair of Converse that are going to be as durable as these are. So again, these are just a pair of rubber boots and they're actually surprisingly easy to get on. The only hard part about it is making sure to tuck the jean legs down with it. Uh, it kind of gets bunches up towards the top, so you just kind of wiggle it down a little bit. With that, for the shoelaces, he actually doesn't have a knot in the top. He actually, they just kind of stop up there and so what I do is I just kind of tuck mine in and so again they're easy to get on and it's probably due to how much material I remove from the front of the boot and these are boots that I, I repurposed these are boots that I had for a really long time I had them in college all the way through uh, living in North Carolina and now I have repurposed them into cosplay boots because I haven't worn them in a really long time with that it ends up getting a really good visualization of the stitching as well as the leather toe piece 
Now with the toe pieces, this was actually kind of hard, and if you get a little closer look, you'll actually see I ended up doing them two different ways. On this one, I tried to adhere these cut pieces uh, side to side like this, and on my left boot, I actually took the center piece and overlapped it, and I was just trying to experiment to see what one would work better with it. By the time I got done experimenting, I actually didn't have any more of this leather left, so I just ended up going with two different styles. From a distance, you can't really tell. I, like, all in all, I'm still really happy with how these turned out because these are really comfy. My feet are not going to get tired. I am really tired. Walking around conventions with this whenever we can go to conventions again. Really comfortable, not restricting on the ankles at all. It gives me a lot of flexibility and a lot of movement. Of course, the stitching, like I said, took me forever to do. These are authentic stitching, and I s stitch them as if they're leather. And in John Ark's character, you can't see any stitching on his boot. I just thought this would be a really cool way to make it look more realistic rather than just a bunch of faux leather glued to a rubber boot. That is the boots, and now we're on to the next item. Now we're moving on to some of the ornamentations of the cosplay. So for example, John Arc wears a scarf or a sash. It's a combat skirt. <laughs> yeah. That we all assume is from Pira. What I, I just have a red piece of fabric here, and this is gonna go around the waist. I end up tucking this into my pant loop over here, like so, just a little bit, and then we end up wrapping it around the side, and then down through where we started. And then you can flare it out a little bit. This one, I just bought this fabric and I didn't do anything else to it, so uh, it's pretty straightforward. This is what it's meant to do. And he always wears his, the extra little bit that dangles down on his right side. And then on top of this is his belt. With this belt, uh, I actually found this at a place called the Creative Exchange where people can just go ahead and take things. And if you want to buy something, you can actually just tell them how much you think it's worth and pick this up. So I picked up this belt and it was a little too short. When I put it around me, it just got to the very end of it. So I bought a bag of scrap leathers at Hobby Lobby and I actually glued in this part of the belt and the leather matches almost exactly and I was really excited about that uh, because that adds a little bit more length to it and it hides it really really well. On his belt he has a pouch and in the show it actually has gold trim going around. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. And the way I actually close it is I actually have some magnets. No, you dunce. It means she has control over magnetism. Magnets are cool, too. A magnet on the inside, a magnet on the outside, and that just kind of keeps it closed almost all the way. This goes on top of Pyrrha's sash, and it's just a loose fit. And so the pouch goes on his front of the left hip and goes this way. The pouch I actually did make I made a form of it and uh, molded it to a block of wood so to give it this square shape. And then I did the stitching for it all the way around to keep these two pieces together. Because this, we have a front piece of leather and a back piece of leather. And this is also from that scrap bag of leather I bought uh, from Hobby Lobby. And I actually ended up using that for a lot of things. This, the belt extension, I used it for the toe pieces for the leather, as well as a lot of the connecting pieces for the foam armor. Speaking of foam armor, we're gonna move on to the foam armor now. And here we have the chest armor and the waist, everything that goes all the way around the back. This took me a lot of time to design and figure out. I actually used Inkscape to figure out a blueprint uh, for how to actually shape and get this the right size. When I made this, I actually did a prototype set, which helped me figure out what pieces were too big, too small, so on and so forth, and that allowed me to adapt this uh, for my size. Now, if you want the blueprints for any of these things, just shoot me a message on my Instagram. That is at Oakley Does Everything on my Instagram page. Follow me and then shoot me a message and I'll send you guys some blueprints. Now back to this, uh, this took me a lot of tweaking and in the end I actually made some mistakes. I'm not perfect! Not yet. 
with the back part. When I actually went to shape it around my waist when I was putting it on, I pulled it around and it did create some spider webbing in the paint as well as some separation in the back plate to the lower back plate and we'll do some close-ups of that here in a minute. Now putting this on, uh, I did a lot of adapting and kind of figuring it out for myself how I wanted to do this. There's actually a very key part of this missing and I'll point that out here in a minute. But how this is, is we have the shoulder straps up top. This is just gonna go over our head. So when I go to put this on, I actually need to put my hood up because the hood is kind of bulky and it sags down the back and we need it to form around with us. So once we get it over our head, we can pull our Put back down. Now, when we do this, I ended up having to figure a few things out. The way I connected this, I wanted this to be all one piece rather than magnet it or you know some other way that a lot of people do their cosplays, is I wanted this to be as similar to real armor as possible. So a lot of times they have a back piece and a chest piece and then they have straps to connect them from on the side area. And so I wanted to do something similar to that. So what I did, is I put some, I made some leather loops and I put some D-rings up under here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the side leather straps that we have here and we're gonna loop them up from underneath through the bottom. This can be a little tricky. I got some practice. So loop these through the D-ring. And on the back piece of this leather, I actually have the felt part of Velcro. And on here, I have some white Velcro to kind of blend into the paint itself. And so we just kind of stick that to it. Do the same thing on the other side. Through the D-ring. Tighten it to it. And now that we have it where we want it, we can go ahead and tighten it down. And I tried to make it so that the leather strips cover up the Velcro completely. And you just kind of got to move it around a little bit so that you can adjust it the right way. And it might not completely cover, but that's not that big of a deal. All right, so here we have on our chest piece. And as you can see, it goes all the way around. Secured on the sides and our shoulder pieces. And the key point that I was mentioned earlier is on his armor, there's actually a, kind of a, a, a swirl or a loop that comes that sticks out over here on both sides. Uh, and I didn't add that to this because I wasn't entirely sure where it would line up. And based off where I have my straps, it, that's kind of where they would go anyway. So I didn't really want to add it uh, because I was concerned that it would just fall off or break anyways. And I want this to try and to be a little bit more durable. An Easter egg I added to this armor is actually the shoulder straps. Now in the show, you never see shoulder straps for John Arc's armor. That's because his hoodie actually covers it all the way up. And so what I did is I used leather straps because if you see in volume seven, he does use leather straps that are the same color to keep the front to, connected to the back. And what I did is if you look closely, I embroidered or engraved into the leather straps these wave things. And those of you that pay really, really close attention, you'll know that that is the same symbol or pattern that Pierre Nikos uses or wears on her arm bangle in, C in volumes one through three. And I thought that would be kind of cool to just kind of incorporate that into it as Jean Arc is a walking testament to Pierre Nikos between the pumpkin peat to um, the shield that he utilizes. Uh, and we'll talk about the shield here in a couple of minutes, but I just thought that that would be a cool thing to incorporate, especially since you never see it anyways, and you probably are not likely to see it on me anyhow, unless I actually point it out to you. So that was just something I thought was kind of creative. One of the things that I struggled with this when I was actually putting it together and shaping it onto me the, for the first time is I knew that this was gonna have a front piece and a back piece, and connected to the back piece was the part that went around the side, and it was kind of hard to line these up when I was first doing it, and when I was doing it, I didn't curve my side pieces enough. And when I went to put on my straps, I ended up pulling or separating apart the back piece to the side pieces. As you can see here, 
what I ended up doing is I re-glued them back together. And so one thing I would do differently, or if you wanted to make this cosplay, is make sure you shape this a lot better and more appropriately for your form before you do all the painting and gluing. That way you get a good shape and you don't have any separation. And make sure that you heat form your back piece to, to have a better curve when you're doing that. And that's about it for the chest armor and the back armor. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our arm armor. The next thing we're gonna do is our shoulder pauldron. And in volumes four through six, he only has one which is on his left. And if you get a little bit closer on the sleeves, I didn't talk about this earlier when we were talking about the hoodie, but on here I actually sewed in some felt for Velcro. And on the back part of our shoulder pauldron, I put the other piece of Velcro. And there's a couple ways I could have done this. I could have added a strap from here and connect it to the shoulder strap up here, but I didn't like the idea of that. That would be more authentic to real armor, but for this I decided that I wanted it to kind of stick here and hang a little bit looser off of the shoulder. As you can see from the front, it works pretty well. It gives me free momentum movement uh, to move around. I'm not restricted really by the shoulder pauldron. And if it was restrictive, you can adjust it in different ways, move it side to side, front and back, top, bottom, stuff like that. But for me, this ended up working really well. Uh, I really enjoy sewing, so I thought it'd be cool to go ahead and do that. Now, I haven't really mentioned how I'm connecting my Velcro or my straps to any of these pieces. I'm just using contact cement. A lot of people use barge cement. I picked up a smaller bottle at Home Depot. You can also buy them at Walmart. So you can use that, just apply it to both surfaces, let them dry, get tacky, and then you connect them uh, and then they, they stick really, really well. Just make sure that if you're connecting it to foam, you want to sand down where you're going to, to adhere it to because if you do it on top of paint it's just going to peel the paint off and then you'll just have to start over so just make sure you do that again that's the pauldron piece now we're going to move on to the sleeves now on my sleeve i have the orange sleeve itself and the elbow armor piece if you get some close-up looks they're actually held in with some black fabric you can actually see in the show that that's how it's held on as a strap rather than stitched into it. And so I have a left one and a right one. So all we gotta do is pull that up. And when I made my sleeves, it actually took me a couple tries to make sure I got a slim fit on it. Again, Jean Arc's a slim guy, so you want to make sure that everything is kind of tight against you. We got that lined up with our elbow. And then for the right sleeve, it just goes on like so. The arm sleeves don't go all the way up to the shoulder sleeves. There's actually a little bit of space in between those. So don't let that go all the way up. Make sure you measure from your wrist up to like your mid bicep. That way, if you go up here, it will give it a little bit of something to grab onto and won't slide down. Now we're gonna go on to the bracers. So here we have our bracers. Now in the show, his are a complete set that go all the way around. And it looks like it's just one piece as opposed to a two-piece bracer. And I went with the two-piece route and connected them with a piece of leather in between. And then same idea as the chest piece. How about a cute little pony? I have leather with Velcro on either side to overlap like that. And the reason I went with this is, again, going for the more authentic armor piece. This is this will also allow me to fit the bracer a little bit easier around the fabric, as it can be a little bit difficult to figure out how thick or round your bracer needs to be if something's gonna be under it. And then once you get that on, you just kinda wanna line your elbow piece up to it as best you can. Same thing on the right side. Also, this works really well for doing it myself. I don't have to rely on somebody helping me to put it on. Everything so far I've put on, uh, I've put on by myself. And one thing I, I haven't mentioned yet is when I did my armor, I actually did some weathering. And if you get up close, you can see how it looks like there's dirt and grime and stuff like that inside some of the creases and the area. 
and, and I just wanted to make it a little bit more worn and not not look so clean and poppy just to make it look a little bit more realistic as opposed to cartoony. All right, now the last thing for our body is the gloves. And these gloves I actually just bought at Home Depot. They're $10. Uh, they're very, very close to the same shade of brown as Jean-Arc wears on the show. And I took off the label for it. I just took uh, a razor and clipped the thread out. And so here we have the gloves. I think this is the only thing of this that I bought and didn't do anything to. It does seem efficient. I know I said I didn't do anything to the sash, but that's just a piece of fabric. I tried making a pair of gloves. Uh, that's really hard. It's really hard to make a pair of gloves with a regular sewing machine. So I just kind of broke down and went for a brown pair of gloves. Now onto the props. We're going to start with the shield. Here we have the shield. I went and again used Inkscape to figure out how I needed this to be. I went and traced around everything and what I did is in my shield video, I described what kind of the wood this is. You can buy a four foot by eight foot piece of this. Uh, it's similar to white erase board. That's not what it's for. So I bought a sheet of that and I used it because it was already white and smooth and I didn't have to go and paint the entire thing. So what I ended up doing is I stacked two of them together and I cut the outside perimeter of the shield and I took them apart. So I used my jigsaw to cut out both Jean Arc symbol and then my outer perimeter that is a tribute to Piranikos. And then I went and I painted the accent pieces, both different colors because in the show they are two different colors. The outline is yellower color and the emblem is the gold color, which is the same color I used for all of my trim pieces on my armor. That was some fine metal you brought me. Accents the white nicely. Moving on to the back of the shield, we have our handle, which is made out of the same material or the same wood dowel that we use for the handle of our sword. And those of you that are familiar with the show, you know that Jean Arc's shield is also the sheath for his sword. And so we have some foam back here, and on the inside of that, we have some fabric, which is actually the same orange fabric as our sleeves and our hoodie. And then I have a leather strap here that goes up through our D ring and comes down to strap to itself. And that's gonna hold it in place. So there we have our shield, front and back. And I'm very pleased with that. I was really excited with how this turned out. Um, Inkscape is a great thing. So if you're gonna be making props for your own cosplay, be sure to make blueprints. That way you get as accurate as you can be. If we don't get extra credit for that, I'm going to be seriously disappointed. All right, and that's going to be it for this video. No, I'm just kidding. I know what you guys are all here for. We're moving on to the sword now. I, I got the sword. And here we have our Jean Arc sword. Now, I ended up making two of these swords. You made that? And somebody is going to be the proud owner of the other one. This one is going to be mine. In the show, it is very hard to see, but there is a gold strip that goes down the center of the sword uh, on either side. Of course, we have the fangs down here. Brothers of the White Fang, why are you aiding this scum? And we also did some wood engraving, wood carving in the cross guard to get the really neat design that you can see. On the bottom here next to the handle, I have no idea what these are called. They're just ornamentations for his sword itself. The blue that I used for it um, is some spray paint that I just happened to have extra of that matched very, very well. And the pommel, I didn't have a great representation of what it is, but this is pretty close. And like I said, the sword goes into the shield and it does fit pretty well. And part of that is on the back side, I made it so that the foam is going to stop the fangs before it actually hits the wood part on the, out, on the front side. And it does fit down in there, but I didn't want it to keep going down and hitting that and potentially knocking these fangs loose. So there you have the sword and the shield together. And again, it slides in and out really well without any issues 
whatsoever. Now, let's talk about the giveaway. Now for the giveaway, I'm actually giving away the first sword I made. I did a few more details to the second sword I made, but that's the one I'm keeping. I'm giving away the first one. Now, in order to win this sword, you need to subscribe to my channel, you need to give this video a thumbs up, and you need to comment in the comment section what is your favorite part about this cosplay? I would really like to hear your thoughts on it. Now, unfortunately, this is only available to the people who live in the United States. Shipping is just crazy expensive into other countries, so I apologize. Only for those of you in the United States. I will be announcing the winner of the giveaway on one of my upcoming videos, so make sure to keep an eye out for that one. I'm hoping for that video to drop either the first or the second week of June, so make sure to stay tuned to see who the winner is. All right, everybody, that's gonna be it for this video. I wanna thank you all so much for watching. I very much appreciate it, and especially thank you to all of you that have watched all the videos for this cosplay series. Again, a huge shout out to all of you. And of course, if you're new to this channel, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. That's right here in the middle. And if for any reason you have missed out on some of the other videos for this John Art cosplay, there's a playlist right there for you. Until next week, that's gonna be it for this video. Bye.